Some ask, wasn't Ms. Raisa Khan the one who lied? Why are the Workers' Party leaders being treated more harshly? As the leader of the House noted just now, if the committee is right, and Ms. then Mr. Singh and his fellow Workers' Party leaders themselves lied and presented untruths to the committee. They lied under oath to protect themselves, to cover up their role, and to push the blame solely onto Ms. Khan, claiming that she and other witnesses like Ms. Law had lied to the committee. This is, is indeed more serious than what Ms. Khan did, if it is so. By lying under oath, they sought to frustrate the committee process. They displayed the same kind of misconduct that the committee was set up to address. They betrayed the trust reposed in them as MPs and not least Mr. Pritam Singh, the leader of the opposition. And this, I hope members appreciate, if true, is a very grave matter. So, members must decide what Parliament will now do about this. Can we pretend nothing happened? Or if that's too much to stomach, given the strong evidence laid out by the committee, perhaps we lower our standards just a little. Note that untruths were told, but argue that it was, after all, not so serious a lie and no harm was done. If we do either of these things, we too would become complicit in dishonouring and demeaning Parliament. We must take the transgression seriously and act on it. And I'm glad that's the conclusion the committee has come to and recommended to the House. What alternative choices did the committee have? It could have recommended to Parliament to administer a token slap on the wrist. But that would show that we were taking a very serious matter rather lightly. Worse, by lowering our norms, we would be telling Singaporeans that it's really not so bad for elected leaders to lie. Alternatively, the committee could have recommended that Parliament itself meets out an appropriately heavy penalty. This is something that Parliament has the power to do. But had the committee recommended that and Parliament decided on the penalty itself, the opposition would surely have cried foul and accused the PAP of using its majority to persecute the opposition. In fact, they are already insinuating this as a smokescreen to obscure the real issue, that the Workers' Party had lied while under solemn oath. I believe, therefore, that what the committee recommends is the best way forward. Since a criminal offence appears to have been committed, let Parliament refer the matter to the public prosecutor. Let the public prosecutor consider the evidence afresh. Let the system work. If the charges are filed, Mr. Pritam Singh and also Mr. Faisal Manap can defend themselves in court. The court will have to be satisfied that their guilt has been established beyond reasonable doubt, and if they are innocent, they have nothing to fear. I commend this course of action to the House, and if I were Mr. Singh, I would vote in favour of both motions. Find Ms. Khan, because she is guilty beyond doubt. In fact, Mr. Singh's own party member, Mr. Dennis Tan, who was on the committee, thinks she should be fined more heavily for the second offence. And if Mr. Singh maintains that he and his fellow Workers' Party leaders have done nothing wrong, he should also vote in favour of referring his own case and that of Mr. Faisal Manap to the public prosecutor. Indeed, he should demand a court trial in order to have the full opportunity to defend himself, vindicate his reputation, and clear his name. That is what I would do if I were Mr. Singh. 
Regrettably, pro-Workers' Party voices on the social media have taken quite a different tack. Before the matter can be conclusively determined, if necessary, in court, they are doing their best to confuse the issues and rouse sympathy. They are asking the public to clear the names of the three MPs, suggesting that referring the case to the public prosecutor is political persecution. What they're really saying is this. Don't look too carefully at what Mr. Singh did. Just remember who he is. He is the opposition that you voted for. He's the leader of the opposition. By, vir by virtue of his position, he should not be referred to the public prosecutor. And any action against him must, by definition, be politically motivated. Because who he is is more important than what he has done, even if he may have committed a crime. Some people may be taken in and sympathize with this story. They say, why not just let the matter rest? Can't we find a compromise solution? After all, it would be easier for the government not to have to pursue this matter against the three MPs. We have a full enough agenda. But Mr. Speaker, as long as the PAP is the government, we will not shy away from doing whatever is necessary to uphold the right norms in this House and to imbue Singaporeans and their leaders with the values critical to sustain trust in the system and critical to our success. Mr. Singh succeeded Mr. Lo Tia Kiang as Secretary General of the Workers' Party. Mr. Lo served for a very long time, 30 years as an MP, 17 years as party leader. He sat opposite me where Mr. Singh now sits. Mr. Lo was a formidable political opponent but he was a patriotic Singaporean. He set a different tone for the Workers' Party. He said he hoped the Workers' Party could help to build a first world parliament in Singapore. He must be saddened that instead, this is what his successor has done. Because what has happened is a betrayal of what the Workers' Party claimed that it stood for. But Judging by Mr. Lowe's public comments, he is confident the party can ride this out. And it need not be a setback for our democracy either. Provided we hold Mr. Singh and his colleagues accountable for dishonouring the standards of this House and also for possibly breaking the law.